Friends, greetings, grace and peace to you in these strange and difficult times. I'm Paul Stevens. I'm the Minister in Placement at St Luke's Uniting Church in Highton in Geelong. Those of you who have been watching these videos regularly will remember that last week I invited you to let us know where you watch these videos and also to give us feedback to help us improve them. And some of you have already done that and we appreciate that. Thank you. But that invitation remains open. And can I add to that invitation a challenge? A challenge to contribute to the videos by uh, perhaps sending in photographs or videos that you think might complement what we're doing. And this is something maybe children in your family could do too. You can contact us via the email address that is on the web page for the congregation. Yesterday, you would remember, was of course Anzac Day, a day of remembering, remembering those who serve this country, often at great personal cost. And it's interesting that I've heard many sp people speak about the pandemic, the COVID-19 pandemic, as uh, the greatest disaster that has befell befallen the world since World War II. How do we face times of adversity? times like dreadful wars or calamitous diseases. What do these times teach us and what resources do we have to face them? As we noted last week, the book of Psalms, the songbook of the Bible, is a wonderful resource when it comes to giving us words in difficult times. One Psalm that is a favorite of many is Psalm 121. It contains, contains words of assurance for ancient pilgrims and for us. Let us listen to this psalm as we begin this time of reflection and prayer. Psalm 121 I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where will my help come? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. He who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time on and forevermore. Prayer involves being open to God, waiting upon God. I find the opening words of the psalm that we've just heard very helpful as I enter into prayer. The words remind me of the true nature of God. I lift my eyes to the hills. From where will my help come from? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. I lift my eyes to the hills. From where will my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Loving God, you are with us in the midst of it all. Even when the hot sun blasts us by day or the darkness of night closes in on us, or suffering and disease threaten us, or isolation gets to us, you are there. You are even there when our lives have not reflected the way of Jesus, for you don't give up on us. Your way is the way of constant presence, forgiveness and new beginnings. I lift my eyes to the hills. From where will my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. O gracious and holy Father, give us wisdom to perceive you, diligence to seek you, patience to wait for you, eyes to behold you, a heart to meditate upon you, and a life to proclaim you, through the power of the Spirit of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The last words that you heard me pray were written by St. Benedict of Nursia, who lived around 1,500 years ago.
Our second reading from the Bible today comes from the writings of the Apostle Paul. And it's from his short letter to the church at Philippi, which is a town in the northeastern region of what is modern day Greece. We're here read only a short portion of chapter two, but I encourage you at home to perhaps read through the whole chapter, maybe the whole book. Philippians chapter two. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave and being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death even death on a cross. As we've journeyed through the Easter season, I've already spoken at length on these videos of the essential nature of having hope in enabling us to get through, and that part of the gift of the gospel message is that it offers us hope, that God is a God of resurrection, that death and suffering and evil do not have the last word. Another resource in facing these times is discovering that our current experiences link us to the experiences of others. And as we think back about past generations facing world wars, we can learn from their experience and how they faced adversity. I joked to a friend the other day that our grandchildren will be asking us what we did during the pandemic. And the correct answer, of course, will be to say, we did what we were asked to do. We stayed at home. When I was a young person, I certainly asked family members what they did during the two terrible world wars of the first half of the 20th century. And there were plenty of stories that they had to tell. I heard stories about living through the Blitz in England about the shock of coming out of an air raid shelter and discovering that friends and neighbours had been killed, about schools being evacuated to country manor houses, about seeing Messerschmitt fighter planes shoot, shooting up um, streets in quiet country villages. It wasn't easy. It was a horrible time. But I learned from the stories. I learned about how that generation faced a time of insecurity and uncertainty. And I learned how they carried on and went about their lives, even with a dark and fearful turmoil swirling around them. I also learned about service, about giving yourself to a higher cause, that life was not all about me and what I can get out of it. I have to say I've been somewhat appalled, to, to, say, to put it mildly, by banners shown in clips from demonstra demonstrations in the US claiming that being asked to physically distance and do other things in order to stop the spread of COVID-19 is somehow a bad thing. Communism, in fact, that the right to do what you like, however and whenever you like, is somehow sacrosanct. Well, no way. In that passage that we heard read, Paul is writing to the church of Philippi and reminding the folk there that in Jesus we find one whose approach to others was one of service and he commends them to do likewise. Let each of you look not to your own interests but to the interests of others. Now Paul does not mean that we are to debase ourselves and consider ourselves of no value. That is a misreading. Christ came to bring life to each of us. He comes to bring a word of peace, eternal hope, forgiveness and healing to each of us. And it is exactly because we are loved and valued by God that we are to look to the interest of others, to share life with others. Now, there is no list of nine steps in the Bible somewhere on how to do this, but um, we need to discern what this means for us, depending on our own role in life and the stage of life in which we find ourselves. 
we may not be doctors or nurses fighting literally on the COVID-19 front line, and surely our hearts and prayers go out to them, especially in the crowded makeshift hospitals in New York or the run-down NHS facilities in the UK. But even those of us who must stay completely self-isolated can use the phone to encourage family and friends, can offer a smile to those who are looking after us. Life, real living, is all about reaching out to the other, in an appropriate way of course, and also graciously receiving the mutual response of concern and love from the other in return. My mother told me a wonderful story the other day. She lives in a nursing home and she is doing well even under the access restrictions that are in place at the moment. She recently received a handcrafted card from a girl, I think from a local school. Apparently lots of children wrote to the, ch the residents of the, uh, the, the, the nursing home. The card from the girl said she would love to come and visit mum and to give her a cuddle. But the girl said she was sorry that she couldn't. But when mum opened the card up, the card showed the little girl's arms open wide in a cuddle, reaching out to my mum. By the way, my mother served during the Second World War as a driver in the Women's Territorial Army, the same section of the army in which the Queen served. As we face this time of COVID-19, Paul's words remind us that we need to journey together through this. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. The following prayer is a prayer based on a prayer written by the moderators of the Reform, a United Reformed Church in the United Kingdom. Let us pray. Compassionate God, as so much is reshaped by coronavirus COVID-19, let us uphold in prayer people left unwell, beckoned by death or bereaved, people providing professional health care and advice, looking after loved ones at home or working to create treatments and cures, people shaping the response of nations and neighbourhoods, of commerce and industry, of service and voluntary organisations and of communities of faith people who are anxious or afraid, alone or totally isolated. Compassionate God, as this weekend we commemorate Anzac Day, while giving thanks for the service of so many, we uphold in prayer all who have been impacted by war and continue to be impacted by ongoing wars. Those whose lives and lands have been devastated, those who grieve, those who cannot sleep without experiencing terrible nightmares, those who struggle with mental ill health and families that struggle to care for them. Teach us and the leaders of the world your way of peace, your way of reconciliation. Living, loving God, we praise you. And through times of peril, we lean into you. For in Jesus Christ, you have trodden paths as difficult as ours, revealing there a love that nothing defeats, a love that bears us through. Even as we strive to behave responsibly and to care reliably, even as we seek to serve others in the way of Christ, so we reach out to you, that in these uncertain times, we might be assured that you are with us, our refuge and strength. And may our faith, hope and love be renewed through Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together and to say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as in heaven give us today our daily bread forgive us our sins and as we forgive those who sin against us save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours now and forever Amen. Jesus said to his disciples, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. 
And those words are for us, friends. And the blessing of God, the triune, compassionate God be upon you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Keep safe. Thank you.